If they add that two trigger setup, I'll be first in line to throw money at them. This is something I have wanted to talk about for quite a while now. As you heard in the intro with clips from older episodes, I have wanted an FDL blaster to have a rev trigger since the FDL 2, and now we have it. Uh, I wanted to be one of the first to get my hands on one because, well, I just, I think the blaster is a magnificent piece of work. It just didn't have a rev trigger until now. So we'll get into more about that later, but let's start about just overall what the FDL-3 is. It is a brushless flywheel blaster that you can configure in a multitude of ways. There are currently three nose options and two tail options. The tail is the back end, including your grip and trigger system. You can have a semi-auto tail, which is what I got, or a full auto tail, which includes uh, three programmable presets and a screen that you can control all of your settings from, whereas the semi-auto tail has a couple knobs that will lock in your speed settings. The noses, on the other hand, there are a few different options. The one that I went with is the Talon short dart nose, so it utilizes Talon mags. And there is also a standard full length mag well that will accept Nerf magazines. And then the Dominator mag well. I wanted a short dart blaster, I wanted an FDL, and now that uh, all that is possible, we went for it. So let's go ahead and get into the first topic on this. Yes, we're starting with pricing, because I want to get that out of the way and talk about all the fun things afterwards. So with that said, this can induce a little bit of sticker shock. Realistically, this is a around $300 blaster for the configuration I have it at, and that's not including an extra holster panel for the side or premium filaments and things like that. And you can go all the way up to four, or $500, depending on what you want for it. Since there are so many different options for it, you can get the full auto uh, tail. The one I have is a semi-auto tail that just has a trigger and no settings that you can manipulate. So there's options there, and then you can get into things like hydro dipping and 3D printed graphics that are put onto your blaster and all kinds of little things. They will work with you to get exactly what you want. And that is really, really fantastic. It adds something that uh, a lot of people refer to it as the Project FDL experience, which for the FDL2 when I reviewed it wasn't something that I got to experience because I borrowed it from a friend. So I had a, an outsider's perspective. Now I have the opposite side. I paid for this and got to go through the process of picking colors, looking at filaments, and uh, seeing things as they progressed. And that was definitely something that you figure into that pricing. I think for the price, it's reasonable. It's not affordable, it's not cheap, I'm not gonna say that, but the price is fair because you are getting a well-made, well-put-together blaster that is what you wanted and they will make sure of that. So I feel like it's very easy to look at the high prices and be taken aback at first. But once you break it down and look at the components, the time invested, not only in construction and printing, but also in development, this is a fairly priced blaster. Also, the files are open source. So if you wanna buy an electronics kit and print your own shell, you can certainly do that. And that's something that some people are doing and have done for the FDL2 in the past. So it is definitely something to take into consideration. Okay, that's enough about money. Let's talk about performance because performance is where the fun happens. This is a blaster in my configuration. Like I said, it is a semi-auto blaster that uses short darts. So Talon magazines, I personally currently use worker darts, so there are some other options that people have been uh, testing and saying they enjoy, and who knows, maybe I will like those more once I give them a chance. But for now, the testing I did was with worker darts. Worker darts, as we all know, perform fantastically, but don't exactly have the best durability. So I encountered a whole lot of decaps, which is unfortunately par for the course for worker darts, but it is important to note that this blaster is not some magical savior that is going to make 
darts that aren't reliable or sturdy any better. You're going to encounter probably the same amount of decaps as you would in another high crush system. So keep that in mind. Uh, with that said, the performance is admirable. It is a brushless system, uh, so you get a really nice sound. I know it's not performance based, but the sound is just, it's a sweet, sweet sound. Now, I got around the mid 170s for my average FPS with a spread of about 14. Uh, one of my tests was a bit higher, but that was due to an outlier, which once you remove was a bit better as well. So a solid spread, uh, a solid FPS average. When you're trying to shoot a target that's 60, 70, 80 feet away, those variations in FPS can be a very significant factor. So having something that has the tightest spread as possible is definitely, definitely worthwhile. Now we could really get into the weeds here about the differences between the different tail systems like mine, which is a semi-auto and the full auto, which is one that I looked at in the past when I was loaned a blaster from Thundercrunk. But I wanna talk about the trigger in specific. The trigger is uh, different on each of the two systems. On the full auto system, it is a uh, switch trigger. So you pull the trigger and it activates a switch and once it engages that, it cycles the pusher. Now it cycles the pusher depending on what setting you have. It could be once to fire a single dart or a burst setting for a few darts or full auto. So as long as you hold it down, it continues to cycle. That is one of the great functionality features of the full auto tail. The semi-auto tail does not have that. It is a single semi-auto pull the trigger once you get a single shot. And personally, I like that. Now, I would really, really enjoy if we had some of the, the different features from the full auto tail in the semi-auto tail as well, potentially an option in the future, uh, mainly the rev trigger. We all know I love rev triggers. So when this was announced that it was going to have the rev trigger, that was the selling point for me finally. It, that was the, the reason I had to finally own it, the one thing that was holding me back and I love having a rev trigger on this blaster. It's something that you don't get on the full auto tail. Now again, maybe in the future, that's something we'll see. Fingers crossed. Looking at you, Jesse, make it happen. Just not soon, because I need to save more money before buying another one, really. Uh, <laughs> but I would absolutely love to see that continued variety and options, because there are things you can do with a rev trigger that you can't do without one. I personally really like that flexibility. Again, we can get into the weeds here, but I'm just going to leave it at that, that my personal preference is the rev trigger, and there are many of you that like having that single trigger setup. So, I think we can easily call this a matter of a difference of opinions, but I'm very glad that there are now options for both sides. And that's something that I feel opens up this blaster to even more people and makes it a better option, again, for a wider audience in this hobby. As you can see in this gameplay footage, the blaster did perform splendidly as I expected it to. When I was putting my darts on target, it felt good. Uh, there's still a little bit of wiggle room for me in terms of getting comfortable and getting dialed in with how I use the blaster in terms of that trigger pull. Uh, there is a difference between getting a full auto tail and a semi auto tail in that the full auto tail with that switch base trigger has a shorter uh, trigger pull length and it's much easier to use, much quicker to snap off. Whereas the pull on the semi auto tail is longer, it is smooth, it's nice, it's different from a Strife or other Hasbro based flywheel blaster that uses a semi-auto pusher. It's much smoother and it feels much better. It is a bit heavier, which actually Jesse from Project FDL already addressed and put out a part or a link to a part from McMaster that would actually make that lighter. So kudos to him for sharing that with all of us. That said, there are some things that you can gain or lose on both sides of these. With the full auto tail, your spin up time varies depending on your setting. So it can be relatively negligible. It can also be noticeable. I am particularly sensitive to this, it seems more so than other people, but it's something that I always wanna mention because if I experience it, maybe someone else does. 
And if not, if it works for you, that's fantastic. That means you have even more options. It's awesome. I love it. But for me, I just feel like it's worth sharing. Overall, this currently is my go-to primary for our competitive games here. It performs, it performs well, and it performs consistently so far. So I'm overall pleased with performance, and I feel like the more comfortable I get with the blaster, the better that will continue to be. But let's move on to aesthetics. This blaster. It looks good. It's the only way to put it, it looks good. This is a very aesthetically pleasing blaster. Now, it may be a little bit thick in terms of width from top to bottom, but it holds it well. It doesn't look oversized, it looks nice. The lines are great, the detail work is great. This is a massive step up from the previous version. I cannot believe how much the design has improved. I, I wanted some improvements here and there, as many people did from the FDL2. This took it a step further than anything I anticipated. Uh, it just looks like a premium product now, like it is. And that, to me, is such an important aspect. Now, we can all get mired down in the details of performance and all those numbers and things we like, because it's fun, let's be honest. We like performance in this hobby. But we also like things to look nice. At least I do. I love my nice looking things. I like aesthetically pleasing and functionally fantastic things. This combines both. And kudos to Project FDL for making that happen. Uh, talking about the aesthetics, let's talk about ergonomics as well, because that kind of folds into that topic. So much better. So much better. I, the grip, I had, I had major gripes about the grip on the FDL2. The FDL3, it feels comfortable. I have rather long fingers and, and kind of large hands. It fits my hand very nicely. I feel comfortable in it. I do have uh, one small gripe on this, and that is the uh, overhang for the rev trigger maybe goes out a little too far, and the rev trigger itself, I wouldn't mind if it was a bit shorter or a bit uh didn't stick out quite as much but that's just one of those minor details which is a great thing to be able to get into in terms of talking about a blaster because when you get into the minor details because you don't have many major details to be concerned about it's a good sign so worth noting but look at it in terms of the big picture Minor details are things that can be fixed or iterated on or may not even be issues for some people. This just may be a me thing, but again, always worth sharing the things that I encounter so you can decide for yourself whether that's something you find important or something you think isn't so much so for you. As I mentioned in the beginning, uh, this blaster can be very customizable. Mine has a silky filament on it, uh, a filament with some glitter in it, and a stark white filament that just looks fantastic together. Other people choose to hydro dip some of their parts, or have nameplates put on their parts, or any number of things, and that's just really cool. Like, in terms of aesthetics, this blaster has plenty of options, and now that the files are available to everyone, people are taking these and already remixing them into their own designs. I've seen a couple that are already just super cool, and I know that we're only gonna see more. So that's, it's just awesome. Like plain and simple, it's just awesome. So this platform really is something that is great for players and for creators. I wanna wrap things up with some thoughts of what I'd like to see in the future from Project FDL for the FDL3 platform, or ecosystem at this point you could call it, because it is a kind of modular system now with different options. Um, personally, now that we have flywheels hitting in that 175 range, I would love to see a dual stage setup in one of the noses in the future. That would be awesome. Getting short darts over 200 FPS out of a flywheel system, that sounds pretty sweet to me. I don't know how much of a pain it would be to make it happen, but I think it would be cool. I, again, would love to see a full auto tail with a rev trigger. I think that would be fantastic. 
Uh, I would love to see more accessories and more kind of add-on pieces, things like uh, flared magwells to make mag swaps easier for people that are trying to swap quickly, say in competitive matches, and uh, little kind of add-on things like that. They're already doing so much right, I would love to see even more be done that way. I'd also like to see maybe some uh, machined flywheels instead of 3D printed flywheels. 3D printed flywheels do work fantastic in this blaster, but I can't help but be curious to know how things would differ with some Delrin flywheels. I think there's a lot of options for Project FDL moving forward with this platform, or I mean ecosystem you could call it now since it has its own variety of tails and noses uh, for their blasters that give you multiple options. So there's some really cool things that I hope we could see. We can dream about all the things we want to see, but in the end we'll have to wait and find out what we do get in the future from this company. But for the time being, I'm having fun with this blaster. It's bringing me enjoyment. And for me, that's what this is about. This was an investment in my enjoyment in the hobby. And so far, it's been a worthwhile one. I know this may not be for everyone. This may not be the type of blast you want, or you may not be at a point where the hobby is something you want to invest heavily in. And that's okay. This is something that I think is very subjective to each person and the way they want to go about the hobby. So I definitely want to hear from all of you whether you're on the fence for this blaster, whether you've ordered one, or you aren't interested in it, I really do enjoy getting all of your thoughts and feedback and comments on videos like this. So we can have those discussions and see what the things are that people really like or would like to see done differently potentially for blasters. So leave those down below. I will look forward to reading them. And real quick, one more thing I wanna to touch on before we close out here is that I know this is a new video, I know it's been a few months, I have been missing this so much. I'm so glad to be able to do a video and talk with all of you, but I'm not back yet. I'm not doing anything on a regular schedule, there's not going to be twin on this channel currently, it's still going to be over on Phone Blast. I'm going to be doing videos when I'm able to, when I can reasonably do them and do them the way I want to do them, I will be posting them. So hopefully uh, it won't be too long between videos, but no promises. I'm just glad I'm being able to uh, do some of these with you here and there. So with that said, if you're new to the channel and you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, feel free to hit that subscribe button, join the community. I would love to have you be a part of us and uh, just look forward to spending more time with you in the future. So as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.